How's it going, guys? My name is Zach with The Movie Castle, and today I want to show you guys something uh, kind of interesting. If you guys remember, a while ago, I was unboxing a bunch of Yuzumaki pocket curses. Basically, Junji Ito had his classic manga, and they made a bunch of blind box minifigures for them. Well, I got a double of Kyrie here with her Medusa hair, and I thought, what should I do with that? I mean, just two doubles sitting on the shelf isn't really that interesting. But then I had an idea. It always struck me that these were gray, kind of like unpainted miniatures you might use in a board game, and I always had kind of been a little curious about that world, and I thought, since I have a second one, I might as well use this as a chance to experiment with painting and see what I could come up with. I had painted other stuff before, obviously, but nothing really quite in the miniature realm. So, uh, without further ado, I took a bunch of progress videos, and I'll show you guys my experience with painting it all the way up to the end, and we get a full color version of this figure. So without further ado, to the close-up camera. How's it going guys? My name is Zach with The Movie Castle and today we're going to be taking a look at a Yuzumaki pocket curse. Anyway, I'm going to be using my box cutter. I'm actually reading through Love Sickness right now so uh, a box cutter, yeah, kind of getting a whole new connotations there. Uh, anyway, Slice the sticker off, open the Azumi flap, the back flap, and the two little side ones. I I might have said this already, but this is one of the medium weight ones. I got those two, uh, Azumi and Kirie, because they were the heaviest, and I got the snail because he was the lightest, so because I don't want dupes, going for a medium weight one. Hmm. Try not to feel it too much because I don't know. I don't want to know till I see it what it is. All right, bag is open. Put them in a uh, black bag so you can't see what they are if you peek. All right, what do we have here? Smooth. Ah, uh, it's a, it's a dupe of Kyrie. I thought I could avoid it because I thought it was light enough, but I do actually have a plan for this one. Kind of wanted to do, and I'm glad I do have a duplicate. So. Let's do a cut. A bunch of time is going to pass, but hopefully we'll see something pretty cool. All right, here we are back in the castle. It's been a little bit, but I decided uh, what I'm going to do with this figure. This is a dupe, so I already have one of the regular one. So I'm going to paint her. I've already sprayed her down with a quick bit of spray primer to help the paint take better. Uh, but yeah, here's the figure in the primed but unpainted stage. I've been researching how to paint minifigures, and a lot of people do that for, um, for like game pieces, you know? So I've got a bunch of these. A lot of these are local hobby store model color by Vallejo. Uh, but the orange hair actually turned out to be a, a little bit harder uh, orange, her, her hair, the color was always so striking, that's part of the reason I wanted to do this figure in color. Apparently orange is a bit of a harder color, but I did find this brand at my local comic book shop, actually made in Texas, and this one is Fire Orange, so I did find me an orange. It's from a different brand, I think it was a tiny bit more expensive, but hey, different brands, learning different stuff, and for this color selection, I want to show you guys a little bit of, and I guess I'll have to zoom out to get more of it in frame, um, Twisted Visions, the Junji Ito art book. Uh, some of the color work was published in the manga, but this has a lot more of it, and this is how we can see Kyrie in color there. Now, this is one thing with her in color is her hair is sometimes more brown in some of these images and her eye color changes so I'm gonna have to decide see they're kind of blue here but there's other images where her eyes are uh, yeah here's another one you can see in this image her eyes are brown and her hair is much more orange 
See there, her eyes are like gray. Yeah, here's a, a classic image. The Medusa hair, but in color, and you see the hair is more orange in this one, and we get the brown eyes again, and then this image over here, her eyes are blue, so I'm just gonna see how the figure's going and then pick my eye color based on that. But yeah, there she is. That's about what her color should be. And one more, I think it's the picture with, yeah, the picture with the jack in the box. We get uh, confirmed that uh, her bow tie is supposed to be black. Uh, but anyway, she's primed, and yeah, I still have a little bit of primer on my finger. Uh, she's primed, ready to go, and I'm going to paint her uh, without further ado. A little bit of a time jump. All right, so progress number one. I went through and I did the base coats, and I will say her having that solid white schoolgirl uniform really did help because that, that's super easy to lay it down and get that right. There are a few little mistakes that I have to fix, but all the videos that I listened to, they said, don't constantly try to fix your mistakes, just deal with them when they come up because otherwise you'll just be switching back and forth between colors fussing over it all day so I'll get that when I get I don't know maybe a little tiny bit of gray on her uniform I'll go back and do a little bit more work with the uniform uh, anyway why she has brown hair right now is because her hair has all this nice texture on it and so when you do paint over it I'm thinking get a relatively dry brush get the orange on just the highlights and the brown will be a good shading plus if I can mix kind of make it a darker uh, orange that would look kind of like some of the uh, other images of her uh, did more detail work on the face trying to get the shading right I gave her deep dark eye sockets a kind of a weird thing that I looked up is you want to kind of create artificial shadows but at the same time it is a real 3d model it will have real shadows, but everyone was saying darkening the eye sockets is usually good. It will look much better when I repaint her eyes in, because right now she is a, a little creepy just uh, staring at you. And also, I do need a wash of some kind. There's progress one, and overall coming along pretty well. So hopefully she'll look a lot better in this next update, which for you guys will come in just a second. All right, it's the next day, and here is where we are. Um, as you can see, a few things have changed with the figure. I was playing around with trying to paint in some highlights uh, a little too far. She does look like she has gray streaks now, so I'm going to have to, before I do that wash with the brown, go back in and paint down some of this white. Luckily, with a white undercoating, the orange should seem a little brighter and get some of that... Uh, color differential that I'm looking so much for. Another thing too, uh, I did give her a little bit of eyes. I realized painting in those shadows wasn't super necessary because uh, manga and anime characters, uh, it turns out they have uh, stylistically large eyes most of the time, so you really don't get to see too much of the, the shadow I put in there. Uh, so, oh well, that apparently wasn't super important for this particular figure. Uh, the other thing is I did experiment with getting this blue wash on the bottom. So the bottom had this really nice carving of spirals that I wanted to make sure I highlighted with my color. So I did a wash, again, primarily uh, water with just a little bit of paint. And I did work it back and forth a little bit so that the blue got into all the crevices and the white was primarily on top. And for the most part, I think it looks pretty good. Um, I did do uh, sort of, for the uniform, uh, light, light blue shading, kind of wherever she got cut off from the, the bust. I did a little light blue. And I also, on thicker parts, uh, took the skin tone, lightened it down with a bunch of white, and made that be sort of, not really a highlight, I don't know what you say, emphasizing the, the thicker parts, like her shoulder. I don't know how well that shows up on camera. And I fixed a lot of her bow tie here. Uh, so yeah, 
face is almost done. Going to have to figure out what to do about the really thin lines needed, but when I do give her her irises and her eyebrows, it will look really good, but I want to make sure that those are among the last things I do because I don't want to mess those up and repaint them. She is almost there, and I think next time you see her, she'll probably be done. So, um, for me, it's going to be about a day, uh, maybe a little more or less, but for you guys, it'll be, once again, instantaneous. So, to the future. Alright, I've assembled the crew back together, because now it's time for the big reveal. This is the final painted version of Kyrie with the spirals in her hair. Overall, I really do like how this one came out. I've never really painted a miniature before. I know for like Dungeons and Dragons, a lot of people, you know, do this all the time. This was kind of my first crack at it, and I really do like how it came out. It looks pretty cool, and I think I managed to get it book accurate enough. I, um, man, that orange was hard to get down right. But if we pull up, this is the black and white version of her. And this is cool, and it has definitely a lot more subtlety in the lines, because, yeah, I couldn't get that small of features. But, you know, they do look pretty cool next to each other. And like I said, I didn't want a just double on the shelf right there. So overall, I think it came out pretty nice. And definitely something to kind of throw some variety into the collection. Now, I do have a duplicate of, I believe it's this snail. So I'll probably try to paint that one too. And then I'll have a glow-in-the-dark one and two full-color ones. But yeah, overall, I think finished product, definitely something I'm happy with. And if you guys got doubles and you have uh, any skill as a painter... Uh, yeah, I think I could probably recommend it. It was a pretty fun little project there. And yeah, now I have something different and unique to my collection. So that's pretty cool. And there they all are. Still, sadly, never found that lens. That, uh, that would be the last one I need. But, oh well. Still really cool. Really love this set. And I would definitely pick up more if they made them, you know. Maybe to the uh, Junji Ito short stories. That would be fun. Anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom. Uh, if you guys want to see more, you can click right there and see more. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Relevant playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.